Bow down. What does the white man say to us? Bow down. What does the white man tell Brother Melvin? Bow down. What does the white man tell Brother Melvin again? Bow down. God tell the white man tell us to bow down to me. Yeah. That's what we're telling you, Brother Melvin. The white man tell you to bow down by giving you this image. Yes, he does. By putting you in the projects and ghetto, in the slums. But what we want to tell you, Brother Melvin, is we don't have to fight carnally against this so-called white man. Because you said, you said something that was key. You said you're not a slave, right? Because, why? You didn't go through this? You didn't go through this right here, right? Did our, did our forefathers and foremothers go through that? Why, why do you think they did? I don't know if they were part of slavery. Okay. What, 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 what do you think their mode of transportation was? Because we don't have any proof, but we know the Bible. We don't, I don't, I don't know my more, uh, I can't go back 10 generations, but this bears witness with our spirit. Watch this right back. Now, this is why God put this in the Bible, and it's, and it's for us to look at these old images so we can remember this. Watch this, sis. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee. So these curses that God put upon is going to be upon thee, read, for a son. For a what? For a son. What does a sign do, sis? It shows you something, right? That's why we're going through the Bible right now. Read. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. And upon thy what? Upon thy seed forever. Upon your children forever. So we can look back here and see 15, 20, 30 generations ago and know that those are our forefathers and foremothers. They were put upon our seeds forever because we're still being, we're still in a lower state. Would you agree? As a nation of people. Right? That's what we're trying to teach our people is that the Bible is relevant for us to even to this day. That we have to come back and start serving God. And God did all this to us. Did he read Deuteronomy chapter 28 to you? To find out what happened? He read Deuteronomy. Did you read 28, 15? Let me get one, let me get two more scriptures before you leave, okay? Give me two more. Give me two more. Watch this. 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Okay, so if we wouldn't hearken, how you doing, brother? Bro brother Melvin. He gonna, he brother gonna Melvin. Go. All right, nice to meet you, Brother Melvin. My name's Athenia. What's your name again? I'm sorry. Coco. Melvin and Coco. Brother Melvin and Sister Coco. Now, what we're going to do is go through Deuteronomy chapter 28, where God identifies who his chosen people are. Watch this. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God is saying, if you didn't listen to what I'm telling you to do, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. So God is telling a certain group of people, if you don't obey all my commandments, right? Read. And his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses. That all these what? Curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses are going to happen to these people that he's taught, speaking about. Is curse good or bad? Curse is a bad thing, correct? Now, let's read some of the curses to identify. Because remember we read to you, uh, Sister Coco, that these curses will be upon us for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy children forever. Right? Because we're still living today. Now, Brother Melvin, don't go anywhere. Come on back, bro. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Uh, let me get this one more scripture. Watch this. 16. Now, we just read that there were going to be curses put upon us. Watch this. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. So God said for your disobedience, you're going to be cursed in the city. Now, if we look at the sign, who's cursed in the city? Brother Melvin. Brother Melvin said us. Who you say, Sister Coco? Us, right? So God said you'll be cursed in the city. Read. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And cursed in the field. Who was cursed in the field? Who was cursed in the, in the cotton field? In the sugar cane field? Who, who would that be, Brother Melvin? I don't know. You, so your four mouth, let's take a look. Come on up. We got these signs to identify some things. You see that picture right there? Right. What are they doing, Sister oh, Coco? They're in the cotton fields, right? Read it again for Brother Melvin now that he got that understanding. Watch this. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So we were cursed in the city and the field. And these curses were put upon us to identify who we are. So knowing that you're God's chosen, right? So that there's something that we have to do that we have not been doing. That's why God leads us in this condition. Because what was the first part that we didn't do in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15? You remember? You remember, Sister Coco? You remember, Brother Melvin? 
Wait, let me read it again. Watch this. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So what does hearken mean? To, to hear. If we would not do what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. To observe, to do all his commandments. Do what? Observe, to do all his commandments. So what did we do to end up in the condition that we're in today? Huh? We didn't listen to God's voice. So we break God's commandments. God promised us that he would put a curses upon us for breaking his commandments. So now we have now that we know that we broke God's commandments and that's why we in the conditions that we in to this day. What do we have to do, brother Melvin and sister Coco, to get out of this condition? Follow the instructions of the Lord. All praises, sister Coco. What do you think? Pray? But did it say to pray or did it say to do his commandments? And now we can do both. I'm not saying that we can't. Give me 1 Kings 8, verse 6. Now we're going to show you that both of y'all are correct. Watch this right fast. I want to show y'all one more scripture, Sister Coco and Brother Melvin. Watch this. Okay, give me one more. One more. Watch this. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 47, 46. If they sin against me. If they sin against thee. God is saying, if they sin through Solomon, he's saying, if they sin against you. For there is no man that sinneth not. Because we all commit sins, correct? Read. And thou be angry with them. And God was angry with us. He did all this to us, correct? Read. And deliver them to the enemy. Deliver them where? To the enemy. But we deliver in America to our enemies. Would you agree? Read. So that they carry them away captives. Did they carry us away captives? Right here, you can look at the slave trade. Look at that. Look at those ships. They were, we were carried away captive, free. Unto the land of the enemy. To the land, well, we in the land of our enemies right now. Who runs this country? The brother just covered a scripture with you. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. That wicked run this country. We are not in charge, free. Unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Uh-huh, now, this is what I want y'all to, the key on this part that I'm getting ready to read right now. Because we were delivered to the land of our enemies. We're in the land of our captivity for disobedience. Watch this. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Ah, read that again. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. What bethink means is to rem remember that you're the children of Israel. And you came in this condition because you broke God's commandments. Read on. In the land where that they will carry captive. This is in the land that we will carry captive. Now we're remembering that we're God's chosen. We're the people of God. And we broke his commandments. That's why we're here. Read on. And repent. And do what? And repent. Repentance has to happen in this place. We have to change our ways. We have to find out what, God, what do we do? What do we do to break your laws and figure out what we have to do to get back into his good graces so we can get out of this condition? Because there's no other way to get out of it. Because we tried voting. We tried marching. We're going to vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump here in the next year. But that's not going to help us because we're still in the same condition. Read on and make supplication until they in the land that carried them captives uh -huh. sin we have sinned so what we have to do is say we have sinned against you god read and have done perversity we have done wrong things against you read we have committed wickedness we've committed all kinds of wickedness against you god read and so return unto thee uh -huh. with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies uh -huh. which land them away captives and pray until they toward their land. So we got to pray to God towards our land, which our land is where? Where do you think our land is? We don't know, do we? think America, we think our land is, is Gastonia or Alabama. Read, give me that in Galatians chapter 4. We're going to show you where our land is because we're from a place. We have a home, and we are keeping God's commandments so we can go back home. That's where we're headed. Sister Coco, I appreciate you standing, but give me, let me get this one more scripture for you. Watch this. The book of Galatians. Chapter 4, verse 26. Uh -huh. By Jerusalem. Uh -huh. but where? By Jerusalem. Y'all heard of Jerusalem? Yeah. Right? That's our homeland. Read. Which is above is free. Uh -huh. Which is the mother of us all. That's where we're from. We're from Jerusalem. All right? You got that, Sister Coco, Brother Mel? Jesus is from Jerusalem as well. Did you know that Jesus was a black man, Brother Mel? You, you didn't know that? Oh, Brother Melvin, give me, five, give me a two more scripture, Brother Melvin. We got a lot to, we got a lot to teach you. You can't leave now. This is the most.
most important information you're going to get. Give me that in Revelation chapter 1. Let's start at verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is the revealing of Jesus. Now, we're going to show you these two images. Right? This is what they gave us in slavery, right? Right. What we're saying is that's a closer depiction, and we're going to prove it in the Bible. Watch this. So what the culture? Where's the? Hold on. Say that again. What's the culture? What's the culture? What? I, I don't understand what you mean by the culture. The culture. You know what I'm talking about? The culture. Col I don't know what you're saying. Culture. The culture. Right. I don't know what that means, Brother Melvin. You got to break it down for me a little bit. Let me let me keep reading again and, and hit that and bring it back to me again. I don't mind listening, but I want to know what you mean while you say culture. Because the culture, uh, if you're saying the culture did teach us this. Yeah, it did. Okay, I agree with you. But is that in the biblical text? That, that, that's not. Watch this. Watch this. No. that What we're finding out is that Christ is a black man. Watch this. Come on over, bro. What's your name? Oh, you speak Creole? You got any? Okay, give me a, give me a second. Watch this, Brother Mel. Watch this. Give me uh, verse 11. Verse Mel, watch this. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Uh -huh. And what thou seest, write it in a book. So what, Brother Melvin? It says, what you see. He's talking to John the Revelator. He said, John, what you see, write in a book. Now watch this. Let's see what John the Revelator wrote down uh, from verse 11 in verse 14. Watch this. Jesus in his head. And Say that again. Jesus a Jew or a prophet? He was both. Right. He was a he was a prophet from the tribe of Judah. Right. <laughs> Watch this. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. His head, hey brother, man, come on. His head and his hairs were white and white like wool. White in color, woolly in texture. Who has woolly hair on the planet, brother Mel? You know who that is. Who? You tell me. Huh. It's huh. us, right? Okay, so automatically, this image right here has stringy hair, right? So that's already a strike against that image. Read. As white as snow. So he had white hair and it was woolly and it was white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because Christ, what was Christ's first miracle? You know? He turned water into wine. He turned water into wine. And he drank some of that wine. So the white parts of his eyes were red. Can I show you the prophecy on that? Because that, that was prophesied to happen. Give me that. Hold that. Give me Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. Watch this. Because Christ drank wine in moderation, right? Remember his first miracle was turning that water into wine at a, at a, at a uh, marriage feast. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. That's a prophecy. His eyes shall be red with wine. So now, does this demon here have red eyes or he got blue eyes? I don't know. He got blue eyes. He got blue eyes, right? His eyes ain't red. Watch this. Now, let's go back. Now, we know that's two strikes against this image. He doesn't have woolly hair, and his eyes are not red. Let's keep reading, and we're going to find out more. Watch this. His head and his ears were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So we know his eyes was red. Read. And his feet. And, and his what? And his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. And his feet like unto fine brass. So what color is brass? Uh, it should be gold. Sh gold, okay, like a brown, like a gold. Is gold. Right, is he gold or brown? Nah. Nah, we. As if they burn in a furnace. So if you take that gold or brown and you burn it in a furnace, what color is it? If I take some white toast and I burn it, what color is it? Huh? If I if I if I burn some toast, what color is it? Black. It's black. Jesus Christ is a black man. Everybody find the sound of my voice. Jesus Christ is a black man from the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's it, brother. So now you got an understanding of why they gave us this. They gave us this in slavery because what? The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked run the earth. Give me that in Job 9, 24, because there was one piece out of there that we didn't get to. Watch this, Brother Melvin. Hey, bro, what's your name? Brother Chris, there, Shalom. Hey, Brother Chris, come on up. Shalom, brother. My name's Athenio. That's Brother Melvin. Watch this. So you know you're an Israelite? Yes, sir. Okay, so you know Christ is a black man, correct? Okay, now I'm going to show Brother Melvin one thing, and then I'm going to ask you a question. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Who run the earth today? Well, I say God, who's in charge that lives on the earth? I know God. You think we run the earth? 
Because if I if I ran the earth, I would not be living in my way I live at now, paying bills. I'd be living in a big mansion somewhere. If I ran it. Who do you think? You tell me. <laughs> Brother Melvin, come on, man. Read it again for Brother Melvin. He ain't getting it. Watch this. Okay, who, what color is the president? Come, come on, Brother Melvin now. <laughs> Brother Melvin, this is us out here. We're, we're vibing amongst brothers out here. You can understand that. So we know who runs the earth today, Brother Melvin. It's the so-called white man. Let's not, let's not play games, right? Okay. I, you just wanted me to say it. You didn't want to say it, correct? I got you, Brother Melvin. Watch this. Read the top of the the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. We know the wicked is the so-called white man. Read up. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. Read that again for Brother Mel. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. We're the judges of the earth. He covered our faces. How did he cover our faces? By saying that Christ is a white man like him. He said, oh, people of God are white. We're white. We rule everything. Y'all Negroes bow down to us. That's what God is, that's what they're telling us in the spirit. They're not telling us out loud, but they tell us that in their movies. They tell us that by putting us in the ghettos of slum, giving us a bad education, putting us in jail, all the things that they do to us, illegally killing us on the street, all those things were, is telling us to bow down to, to God. But, I mean, not bow down to God, but bow down to them. Watch this. Isaiah 51 and 20. Watch this, Brother Melvin. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. We fainted. Where do we faint from? Our true nationality, our true identity. Read. They lie at the head of all the streets. When you go to the projects, you, well, you see our people out there selling drugs. We lie at the head of all the streets. Read. As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net, right? What, what, what does a net do to a wild bull? He goes crazy. Now he's trapped. He's trying to get his way out. That's us. Read. They are full of the fury of the Lord. We're full of the fury of the Lord. The Lord did all this to us in Deuteronomy chapter 28. That's his fury that he put upon us. Read. The rebuke of thy God. The rebuke of thy God. That's the understanding that we have. That's the rebuke. God is trying to correct us. Read. Therefore hear now this. Thou art afflicted and drunk, but not with blood. Read on. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord, thus saith the Lord, the Lord, and the Lord thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. Uh-huh. Read on. Behold, I have taken out of thy hand the cup of trembling. So God said he's going to take that cup out of our hands eventually. One day he's going to take it out of our hands. Read. 51 to 23. I think okay. 51 to 23. All right. Even the dregs of the cup. Even the dregs. We drink the bottom. You know how when you get a cup and it's got a lot of mess in the bottom of it? It's them that's the dread. That's the bad part of the cup. That's what we're drinking today. But what is he going to do? Thou shalt no more drink it again. We ain't going to drink that cup once we come back to keeping God's law. Watch this. But I will put into the hands of them that afflict thee. And God is going to put it into the hands of us that afflict thee. Who is the ones that afflict thee, Mother, Brother Mel? The so-called white man. You said it earlier. You didn't want to, but I'm saying. What, watch this one scripture. Give me 23. Verse 23. Which I have said to thy soul. Bow down. What does the white man say to us? Bow down. What does the white man tell Brother Melvin? Bow down. What does the white man tell Brother Melvin again? Bow down. God tell the white man tell us to bow down to me. Hey, That's what we're telling you, Brother Melvin. The white man tell you to bow down by giving you this image. Yes, he does. By putting you in the pro projects and ghetto in the slums. But what we want to tell you, Brother Melvin, is we don't have to fight carnally against this so-called white man. Give me uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Cause, and four. So what we're proving is that we ain't gonna fight carnally. We're not gonna go get guns because they'll wear us out. They, they are in charge of the whole government. They got weapons, they got a military. What do we got? A few people of us together trying to gather ourselves. We have nothing. So we're not gonna fight physically against them. But what we're gonna do is keep God's commandment and race for Christ, who's a black man to return and get us out of this condition. Watch this. Watch this, Brother Melvin. Give me one second. Thank you. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we don't have carnal weapons. We, we don't have uh, weapons that we're going to fight with, right? Because we can pull up a gun. And who we got to go buy the bullets from? <laughs> the same man that we're trying to kill. You think he's going to say, hey, come on in my store and I'll sell you 10 billion bullets to shoot me. He ain't going to do that. Read on. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We pull down the strongholds in our people's minds 
by proving that Christ is a black man according to the scriptures, not a white man. We prove that we're the children of God and that the people in Israel that saying they're God's people are not. That's what we do. We go to the scriptures and prove that. Read on. Casting down imagination. We cast down the imagination that Christ is a white man, that the people in Israel are the real Jews. No, we're the real Jews. The real Jews are in the projects and slums and the ghettos of America. Those are the real and true Jews of the Bible. So now you understand that, Brother Melvin? All right, brother. I appreciate you taking the time. You can say nation. nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is